Pod, pod, podcast playlist. You are listening to Podcast Playlist, a podcast about podcasts, where I, Brendan Hutchins, share what I've been listening to and why you should listen to. This is the third episode in a series about news and politics podcasts. Will the president's immigration ban survive? Will he ever release his tax returns? Do his business conflicts violate the Constitution? These aren't just random musings, but actually episode titles for Can He Do That? by The Washington Post, a weekly show dedicating each episode to a single topic about the United States' 45th president. That single topic is always a question about something in the news that doesn't seem like normal presidential behavior. Allison Michaels, the digital editor of The Washington Post, hosts Can He Do That? and asks the central question each episode to a colleague at The Washington Post, who has reported on the topic. The show also includes excerpts of Allison and the co-host interviewing experts and historians. I'm happy to say I was able to connect with Allison and interview her about the show. We'll get to that in a little bit. First, I've noticed something through political discussions online and in person. I have a short memory. Eight years ago, uh, details are hazy. 20 years ago, it didn't happen. As this country and world continue in a new era of politics, how can I know if what is happening is similar or different from what happened before? And if it's different, is it as bad as it seems? One thing I appreciate about MSNBC's Rachel Maddow is the historical context she starts her broadcast in. Almost every intro monologue is a history lesson that ties into the big story of the day. What's great about Can He Do That? is they take a similar premise where the topic of the week is extrapolated and fit into a historical context that's coming from the Pulitzer Prize winning Washington Post. They cover many aspects of what's going on in the White House today, mostly following the news of the week. The show almost acts as the neck brace needed at the end of a week-long whiplash. A little bit of a spoiler, but the answer to the question of the week is almost always yes. The current administration appears to be doing things that break norms, but the controversies currently in public view are within their power. Can he continue to be hostile to the media? Can he continue to sort of threaten to uproot decades or in some cases centuries of historical tradition and precedent? Can he do this? I think he can. I think that he can do it and he will do it. Can he do this? Can he tweet policy and reactions to major news events? Can he bypass traditional media? Essentially, can he continue to behave like Trump the candidate on Twitter now that he's officially president? Well, legally, yes. Uh, Is it the best idea? I don't know. Can Trump be a successful president without unified support from his party in Congress? Uh, Can he do this? We've seen him really act on his own so far. And you have a president in Trump who really believes in business. He was always a lone figure. He was a man atop his own organization in his own tower. The question really comes down to, can Trump and really the Republican Party at this point come through on their main promise to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act? I would say at this point, yes. I mean, it looks very hard still. Can Trump make such drastic cuts to the budget? Will they actually pass? Can he do this? The exact answer is no. This budget is not ever going to pass in Congress. Can he tweet the things he does? One question, though, is have we ever seen anything similar to it in presidential history? Well, what is fairly common is the idea that presidents have tried to bypass the traditional media and reach out directly to the people. My friends, I want to talk for a few minutes with the people of the United States about banking. To talk with the comparatively few who understand the mechanics of banking, but more particularly with the overwhelming majority of you who use banks for the making of deposits and the drawing of checks. Of course, what you just heard there was FDR's iconic first fireside chat. Yeah, that's the first thing that came to my mind, but I wanted to know more. So I talked to professor and author David Greenberg. David wrote Republic of Spin, an inside history of the American presidency. And he's a professor of history and journalism and media studies at Rutgers University. I think presidents, whenever new media have arrived on the scene, new new technologies, there's been an effort that often takes some time to figure out how to make best use of it. So uh, you mentioned FDR and radio. 
you know, several years before him, Calvin Coolidge as president really was the first radio pioneer. He gave the first inaugural address on radio, gave the first nomination acceptance address on radio, uh, State of the Union address he delivered via radio. But all he really did in those cases was to give the speech that he had planned to give anyway and have uh, a microphone and a wire hooked up so that he could reach all parts of the country. That was certainly groundbreaking, but it was very different from what FDR did, who thought about how a radio address could be maximally effective. And so when he gave his fireside chats, he made them short. He used different language. It was more colloquial, more informal, as though he was talking to people sitting in their living rooms. Uh, it was really conceived from the beginning as a radio address. And that was what, what was different. Same thing, I think, if you look at differences between how Eisenhower and Kennedy use television, uh, and I think between how Obama and Trump have used Twitter. Can he keep his tax returns private? How is it that Trump cannot just do something that all these previous people have done? Can he just not release his tax returns? Essentially, can he do this? Legally speaking, yes, he can. There is no law right now that compels him to release these taxes, and that fundamentally is how he's gotten away with this. That said, that could change in the future. Congress might at some point decide to spearhead such a law. A future president might spearhead such a law. We might see things like subpoenas, congressional committees looking at this. So there are ways for people in positions of power to compel him to release his taxes. But as we sit here right now, this is completely legal, 100%. And that is a big part of why he's been able to do this. Are Trump's attacks on the media a threat to the freedom of the press? The pool is the, the travel pool, is the group of 13 journalists who travel and cover the president everywhere he goes. So that's the group of reporters who fly in Air Force One with the president, who go with him when he does something uh, off campus, we say, in Washington, or when he travels abroad. Do you know this fun fact? I heard it on a White House tour. I can't guarantee it's true that it's called the press pool because the briefing room where the press listened to the president speak used to be a pool. I can confirm that there is a pool underneath the briefing room. That is a true oh, statement. It still exists? It's still there. It's not an actual swimming pool anymore. It's, uh, it's a place where we have a whole bunch of wires and technological equipment, but it used to be the president's swimming pool and the briefing room was indeed built on top of it. I can't say whether that has anything to do with why it's called a pool. My guess is that's not the case because the word pool in this case is we pool information with each other and share information and that's what a pooler does. I was super fortunate to be able to connect with Allison Michaels for an interview about her podcast. Can he do that? Thank you so much for being my guest on Podcast Playlist. Please introduce yourself and tell me what's your favorite podcast to listen to. I'm Allison Michaels, digital editor at The Washington Post and host of our Can He Do That podcast. And my favorite podcast is definitely The New Yorker Radio Hour. Nice. Um, so how do you decide what's important to cover? We do a couple of different things. One of those things is we examine what's going on in the news environment. Mm -hmm. And we look at those moments throughout the week when people have asked us those questions that are, can he do that? The moments that Twitter has kind of lit up over the idea that President Trump is pushing boundaries that we haven't seen pushed before, brushing up against presidential norms or seemingly breaking precedent. Those are the those are the clear moments. Those, mm. are, those are the easy ways to kind of derive our, our best episodes. We also get ideas from our show from reader submissions. A lot of times something will be going on in the news and a reader will send us a question that they have from watching the news, something they've seen happen and they want answers to. And kind of the third way that we get ideas for recover is just by looking at general powers and limitations of the American presidency. So kind of finding the times where something might not necessarily be happening critically at this particular moment, but it's things that we understand are important to the functioning of our democracy and to mm -hmm. the functioning of the presidency. So we look for opportunities there as well. So it's really these three buckets. And in addition to kind of deriving story ideas that way, some of the ways we decide what's important to cover is by then applying that historical and legal framework to the topic at hand. So that usually means we need somebody who can provide historical context, who knows what's happened in the past, what previous presidents have done, previous actions have been taken, and also somebody who can talk us through the legal argument for why or why not a president could actually do this. Also, of course, we need somebody who can kind of drive us through an understanding of the political moment as well. So the politics of these particular decisions. So all of 
kind of comes together and it forms this narrative storyline of, of history, of legality, of politics at the moment. And it really paints a clear picture of the consequences for some of these things that the president can or can't do. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite episode to produce and, and why? My personal favorite episode of Can He Do That is our episode dedicated to whether or not Trump can unilaterally wage war and really how far Trump can go without Congress. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about this episode the day after President Trump made the decision to launch missiles on a Syrian airfield. And in his decision to do that, we saw a bigger question. And that question was, how far can he go? Can he do this? And if he wanted to go ahead and declare war, is this an act of war? And what makes an act of war? So we examined that. And I found that episode just really interesting, really captivating, kind of learning the ins and outs of how war works and what what the law says. But also, we ended up releasing that episode one day after President Trump had then made a decision later on to release another very large bomb on an ISIS compound in Afghanistan. So it ended up taking on this whole new meaning. Uh, We were able to accommodate that news in last minute. So that was a fun one Mm. to make. And I really learned a lot there. And I hope our listeners did, too. So I think for us, the goal of this podcast is quite literally written in its name, right? This is, can he do that? And we are trying to answer that question. Now, of course, that takes on different forms every week. So sometimes it really is just a question of whether or not an action that President Trump is taking does, in fact, brush up against presidential law. But also sometimes the question kind of goes beyond that, right? Can can President Trump come through on his health care promises? Can President Trump, you know, come through on his promises he's made to American voters throughout the campaign. So those are kind of an adaptation of that can he do that question. Mm -hmm. All in all, though, it speaks to the goal of this podcast, which is we are at a rare moment in political history, and we want to make sure that we are answering, we as the Washington Post are answering the questions that people have. And in doing so, we're holding the administration to account as we do for every administration. So this gave us another format to explore that question, to explore the presidency, and we've been able to do so here. What has surprised you during the process of producing your podcast? The dedication of the listener base. We have people who, you know, tweet at me, send me emails all the time, constantly asking me the question, can he do that? It's something that's kind of taken on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And I've been really surprised by that. You know, this idea that it can just take on a life of its own, that people who listen feel invested, they're willing to learn, you know, they're willing to sit and listen to somebody kind of explain the ins and outs of the law, talking more intimately to them in a way that they might not be willing to read through a legal document or something like that. That's been surprising to me, just, just how much people are willing to learn, uh, how much people engage with this platform, what kind of listeners you get, how that listenership intersects with our readership. All of those things have been really interesting to discover. Have you come across challenges during the production or are there more rewarding moments? For me, the biggest challenge here has kind of been knowing when to respond in real time to news that's happening versus address topics that have a little bit longer shelf life. Mm. So, you know, learning that rhythm, learning how to do that. For example, recently we had an episode about the Ninth Circuit Court about whether or not Trump could break up that court and what that would look like. And that episode came a week after President Trump had repeatedly talked about breaking up the Ninth Circuit. So sometimes, you know, it's not exactly on the news as much as as one might hope, but we felt that that particular story was critical to kind of the narrative we're trying to tell here, which is looking at the balance of power among the three branches of government. This was kind of core to the theme of the podcast. So we wanted to make sure that we we answered that question. So kind of learning that flow has been a challenge, learning when, you know, when to kind of jump on the next thing, when to respond in real time, and when to kind of let something pass and see, take a a broader view of the news. That's been an interesting challenge for us. Thank you so much for being on Podcast Playlist. Uh, How would you like listeners to find your podcast or to reach out to you? If people want to listen to Can He Do That, you should go ahead and find us on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on Overcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Or you can go ahead and go to wapo.st slash can he do that. That's wapost slash can he do that. And you can listen to all of the episodes there. You can read our blog posts about them. You can share them. You can review them. You can leave comments. So go ahead and check it out. We think you'll love it. Thank you so much, Allison. Can He Do That? is a well-researched examination of current events in a historical context with Washington Post writers who have researched and written about the question and guests who are specialists in the topic. You can find more about Can He Do That? at wapo.st slash can he do that and the links will be in the show notes. 
This is the third episode in a series about news and politics podcasts. You can check out the previous two about 538 and Intercepted, and return next week for a new media empire on the rise. I'm also happy to say that this podcast is supported by Audible. You can go to audibletrial.com slash podcast playlist and receive a free audiobook. It's yours to keep and 30 days access to their other features like daily deals and more. You can also get the news read to you. Sam Scholl reads the Washington Post. It's usually around an hour long. It's available daily with your subscription to Audible. And here's a sample. Among the gifts Francis presented to the president was a copy of the pontiff's 2015 encyclical on the environment and its relationship to social justice. Although it predates Trump's presidency, the document seemed a message to an administration that has questioned climate change and whose economic policies are centered on profit and growth. Please visit audibletrial.com slash podcast playlist to get an audiobook for free, plus news read to you in the morning, and you get to keep that book forever, and you'll get access to their service for 30 days. That's audibletrial.com slash podcast playlist. This episode was recorded in Can We Still Have Four, Portland, Oregon? Writing and narration by me, Brendan Hutchins. The producer and script editor was Sarah Hutchins. The chief advisor was Yuvi Zalko, and moral support and infinite distractions were provided by Sebastian and Autumn, Sarah and my cats. This podcast is hosted on the incredible Podient.co podcasting platform that has a free unlimited tier and upgrades for services and features. Check them out at Podient.co, and the link will be in the show notes. For more podcast recommendations and to rate and review podcasts yourself, head to podchaser.com, a new site devoted to podcast discovery. A cross between IMDb to track hosts and guests and what Letterboxd is for movies and Goodreads is for books, Podchaser is a social home for rating and reviewing podcasts and episodes. You can use my beta key, Podplay, P-O-D-P-L-A-Y, for access to Podchaser during the beta, and a link will be in the show notes. Send me your comments, suggestions, and recommendation success stories. I'm at the Pod Playlist on Twitter. I'm on Facebook at Podcast Playlist, and I'll accept text and audio messages to the Podcast Playlist at gmail.com. You can leave a comment on the post at podcastplayl.ist, where you can also see the show notes. In the immortal words of Mike Briquette from NoFX, the People's Revolution is going to be a podcast. Pod- pod- podcast Playlist. This country and world continue in a new era of podcasts. <laughs> and they actually, well, podcasts and politics is what I meant to say. Uh, <laughs>